Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and in this video we are going to be continuing our series on writing a Slack bot in the Go programming language. Towards the end of the last video, I encourage you to think of some ways that we could improve our Slack bot solution. And in this video and the next video, we're going to implement one of those improvements. And before we talk about the improvement, I want to first talk about some of the disadvantages with our current solution. The primary disadvantage that I see in the current solution is that Jenkins is dependent on the uh, having the Go programming language installed on the Jenkins instance. And in addition to that, it's also dependent on having the program locally on the Jenkins machine. So if you want to integrate this Slack bot into your Jenkins uh, pipeline workflow, you have to make sure that the Go programming language is installed uh, and that you can clone down the Go program, uh, the latest version of the Go program from GitHub when the Jenkins pipeline script executes or you have to package the Slackbot program into an executable that can be installed on the Jenkins instance. And if you do this, you have to make sure that the Slackbot uh, program is updated when new uh, versions of the Slackbot program are released. And this maintenance that you have to do scales out as you have additional uh, Jenkins servers. You might not have just a single Jenkins server, you might have 10 Jenkins servers, and on all those Jenkins servers, you need to make sure that you're keeping the Slackbot program up to date. You might have a configuration management tool that's doing that for you, and if so, that's that's good, but it's still, um, it's still adding additional uh, overhead if you plan on having the Slackbot program installed on the Jenkins instance and running it from the Jenkins uh, instance itself. Now the question is, how can we decouple the Slack bot from the Jenkins instance so that Jenkins doesn't need the Go programming language installed or the Slack bot program installed? What we can do to address this disadvantage is we can convert our Slack bot program into essentially a microservice with a single API endpoint, and that API endpoint accepts a JSON uh, payload and the JSON payload would be pre what previously were the command line arguments for running the Slackbot program. If we do this, the only dependency that Jenkins needs is the curl utility to make a call to uh, the API endpoint with a JSON payload. This will remove the need to have the Go programming language installed on Jenkins or the Slackbot program itself installed on Jenkins. And in general, this will be a more scalable solution than what we previously had. So now that we have an idea of what we're going to build, let's get started. So I have our Slack bot program open uh, that we wrote in the previous videos. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to remove some of the logic uh, or comment out some of the logic that we don't need uh, for now. Um, we're going to write kind of a minimal, vi minimally viable product. Uh, at first, uh, just a bare bones kind of microservice, and then we'll add some JSON processing logic to that microservice. But initially, I just want to essentially turn this Slack bot into a server that uh, with a single API endpoint. And when we hit that endpoint through the browser, it'll send a predefined message to, uh, to our Slack channel. So the first section of code that I'm going to comment out is this uh, command line uh, argument processing logic. And I'm also going to comment out a couple of these variables that use those ver um, the command line arguments. So we'll comment out uh, the Jenkins build details and the Jenkins build details field, the Jenkins build details section. And we're going to keep uh, the divider uh, block. And then we'll also keep the pretext uh, the pretext block as well. And those will be the only two things that we send in the message. Those are predefined. Um, the pretext is predefined. So what we'll do is we'll copy the pretext variable right there. So we still have the pretext uh, section and a divider, um, a, a divider section as well. And in addition to the pretext variable, we'll also need to copy this line here, uh, line 16, initializing an API client with, uh, with Slack. So let's go ahead and copy that. And now that we have uh, that code commented out, uh, let's import a dependency 
and the dependency that we need to import is net slash uh, HTTP. And this library will allow us to uh, create a server, uh, essentially converting this uh, Slackbot program into a micro server, uh, a micro service. The next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, create a handler function for the single API endpoint that we're going to have for uh, this Slackbot program. So let's create a function, uh, a new handler function, and we're going to call it send Slack message. In send Slack message, uh, since it's a handler function, it needs to have uh, exactly two arguments. And the first argument is going to be an HTTP response writer. We'll call it W. And then the second argument is going to be an eight, a pointer to an HTTP request, and we'll call it R. And once we have this uh, handler function, we can copy the code for sending a message into the handler function. So I'm going to copy uh, all of this code into our send Slack message handler function. Okay. And uh, I'm also going to delete the commented out uh, code just to clean things up a little bit and make it a little bit easier to read. Okay. And kind of update the formatting there. Okay, so um, now if we were to call this function with uh, the uh, with these arguments, with a response writer and a HTTP request, uh, what this function, with what this handler function would do, is it would just simply send a message uh, with the pretext, and it, all it would say is "Hello, your Jenkins build is finished," followed by a divider block. But in order to utilize this handler function, we first have to instantiate a server and define an endpoint that, when called, uh, it will invoke this handler function. So let's go down to the main function and um, instantiate a new uh, HTTP uh, server. And to do that, uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to define the endpoint, uh, the the API endpoint that is going to invoke our handler function when it's called. And to do that, we simply say http.handlefunk and then we define our endpoint and this is going to be forward slash send slack message we'll make it simple and uh, align it with the name of our handler function and then we'll pass in the name of our handler function okay so this is basically saying that anytime someone visits the web, uh, the URL, URL where the server is hosted, in our case, it's going to be localhost. So anytime someone visits localhost slash send Slack message, it's going to call this handler function send Slack message. And then after we've uh, defined our uh, hand handler function here in the API. Uh, the endpoint that is going to be used to call our handler function, uh, we'll start. Uh, we'll start our HTTP server. So, HTTP dot listen and serve, and uh, we'll pass in the arguments of. Uh, in my case, I'll put uh, 891 port 891 as the port that it will listen on, and the second argument will be nil. And one additional thing that I would like to do here is I'd like to just provide anytime someone uh, visits that endpoint in the browser, I'd like them to see kind of like a confirmation uh, that the Slack message was sent. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll just add uh, a formatted print and we'll say fmt.fprintf and we'll use the response writer that was passed in as an argument to the handler function. And then in 
uh, quotes and using HTML ta tags, HTML header tags, we'll say sent Slack message. And I think there's a couple things I missed uh, down in the main function. Uh, the uh, function uh, name is incorrect here, so I send Slack message with a capitalized M, and then this uh, this call is listen and serve, not uh, server. Okay, so listen and serve. So that should be everything that we need, um, and I think we can go ahead and run our program and test it out. So I'm gonna go uh, to the command line, and I'm gonna say go run, and then Slack notification. Okay, and it looks like our, our server is running now. And I'm gonna navigate to the browser, and I am going to uh, navigate to localhost 8091, and then our endpoint is send Slack message, okay? And if I navigate uh, to this page, it says sent Slack message. Um, so we get a confirmation, and then you can see in uh, our Slack channel, the general Slack channel that we've been sending messages to, you see our message, our pretext uh, message is uh, is sent to the Slack channel. So it says, hello, your Jenkins build is finished. So now we've converted our Slack bot program into a microservice with a single API endpoint. But now we need to figure out how can we still process arguments when we make a call to uh, this service's API endpoint. And in the next video, we'll add logic to process a JSON payload that's included in the HTTP request that we send to this particular API endpoint. We'll also modify the Jenkins pipeline script to uh, invoke the curl command and make a call to the endpoint with a JSON payload using the Jenkins pipeline environment variables as arguments. I hope you're enjoying the series, and if you are, please consider throwing likes on the videos and subscribing to the channel for more series like this. All the code that we write in this series is available in a GitHub repo that I've linked in the video description below. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.